everybody, welcome to the Fumble Live. Happy Friday, it's the freaking weekend and I'm so excited. We have a really great show for you coming up right now. We actually have an interview with Ted Ginn Jr. that Jackie's going to be doing, so stay tuned for that. That's gonna be coming up uh, shortly. And uh, yeah, you guys, make sure you subscribe, tap the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Chime in in the chat, we love hearing from all of you. And of course, I'm Devin Howard. You can find me on Instagram as at Devin Howard, Chris. Oh, it's your boy, Chris. You can find me everywhere at CK2K. And I'm Jackie Ray. You can follow me on all social media at Jerry the Fanatic. Happy Friday, guys, and happy birthday to Ahmad Arbery. I am Britt Johnson. You can follow me on all social media at I am Britt Johnson. So just as a reminder, Britt, you reminded me about this. Um, we have the that challenge to walk 2.23 miles, walk, jog, bike, whatever, um, in honor of Ahmad. So go ahead and do that today. And if you do and you're tracking it on your phone using some sort of a, an app, make sure you post it on social media, tag the Fumble Sports, tag all of us hosts. We would love to see it. Britt, what do you want to yes. add? And his mom wanted to let everybody know to wear a white t-shirt because he mm. was wearing a white t-shirt when he jogged the last time before or when he was okay. killed. So his mom is letting everyone know if you can, while you run in honor of him, wear a white t-shirt as well. Amazing. Yes, okay. I love that. Um, so how's everyone doing today? Everyone feeling good? Ready to go for this Good Friday show? I'm excited about it. Yes. Yeah. Friday. <laughs> and we're kind of slightly opening up. So this isn't one of those, oh, it's just another day. We're just going to sit in the house. We kind of have a few places we can maybe go. I don't in know. In LA? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Like so I'm excited store. about that. Who's, yes. Who's going to be able to do the toy store today? <laughs> But the funny thing is you can't even really go. You can just go to pick stuff up. So it's like right. it's open for pickup only. Like it's not like you can yeah. browse around and hang out and yeah. shop and try clothes Stepping on in stones. the dressing room. No. Yeah. But yeah. next stones. week, it's a start, 15th, yeah, the 15th it's in LA, we should be free to go mosey about if it hasn't doesn't get extended. We'll see. I'm mm -hmm. patiently waiting oh. for that time. I'm excited. I can't wait for things to open back up. I'm going to jump into our first need to know news story, you guys. So if you were on Twitter yesterday, you may have seen some uh, bizarre tweets from Giannis. So uh, he posted a, a bunch of tweets that said things like, I'm sick of this ish. My manager told me to play. I didn't want to play. Now I have Corona. That was followed by some racist remarks. Uh, he said, F King James. He tried to hire a hitman on me. He also accused the Bucks, the very team that he's devoted to, of being racist and calling him the N-word if he doesn't score 60 points in a game. In those tweets, he mm. dragged pretty much everybody, the Currys, Chris Middleton, even the late Kobe Bryant. I mean, it was pretty rough, the things that were coming uh, out of his Twitter account, but obviously it wasn't Giannis actually typing these things. He was hacked. So his girlfriend, Mariah, posted a statement announcing that he'd been hacked um, along with his bank accounts, his phone, his email, like pretty much this hacker got a hold of everything that Giannis has online. Um, the Bucks said that they were investigating the issue and then shortly thereafter he was able to recover his account. He posted a statement apologizing for all of the negative and hateful things that came off of his profile. Um, he apologized to the Currys, the Bryants, LeBron, Chris, everybody. Um, and, you know, was basically very remorseful, even though he didn't do anything wrong here. Uh, I thought it was interesting that we didn't get to hear what happened with his bank account. I want to know what the hacker did with all the money in there. Did he take anything out? And also, I want to know who this hacker is, because those tweets sounded like they were written by some ignorant 13-year-old. So either a very advanced hacker or just some old guy who uh, has the brain of, like, a preteen. Uh, anyway... Chris, when you first saw these tweets, did you think for a second that Giannis had maybe gone off the deep end? Or what were your thoughts? Did you know immediately it was a hacker? Yeah, no, immediately. Immediately knew it had to be a hacker because of the things that were being said. Um, Giannis is already one that's not even crazy about social media in the first place. So to go and then just completely 180 and then go crazy like this, yeah, 100% knew it had to be the um a hacker at that time it's just the other stuff that came with it not just the social media and other things that were hacked that's the part that i felt really bad for same like that bank account like yeah. i was saying i wish we would get an update on that did they drain it did they steal money crazy i, I feel bad anything. for him yeah i haven't heard anything either um okay you guys i'm going to jump into our next need to know news story all about the nfl schedule so um the league released their official schedule last night they had that three-hour special 
we don't know what the season is going to look like in terms of whether or not fans will be there, if games can even start when they're supposed to in September. There's 256 games scheduled. Uh, we'll be seeing Tom Brady and Gronk on their new team. We'll see the reigning, gold, Super Bowl, uh, reigning Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. Lots of stuff to look forward to. I hope the season is able to go on as it usually does. But I want to know which game are you most excited for? Britt, I want to hear which matchup you're like the most amped about. Is there anyone in particular or a few that you'd like to mention? Um. Well, I'm. I was interested to find out that my Cowboys don't have our first divisional game until week five. So I kind of thought everybody was doing that. But then I looked at the rest of everybody's schedules and there are some teams that have divisional games yeah. starting week one, which I was very surprised to see. I guess they didn't take my advice on that. But um, I think I'm really excited most to see week 13. Um, it's a December 3rd game. It is a Thursday night football game. It's the Cowboys versus the Ravens. I'm really excited to see this matchup because it's not something you're going to get to see often. We are different conferences different divisions so we don't play each other very often but i think it'll be cool because i believe lamar jackson and um Dak prescott are kind of similar in style of how they quarterback um obviously lamar is better i'm not saying Dak is on the level of lamar jackson but um and last year lamar jackson's team had the best rushing offense we had the best passing offense with the Cowboys. So I think it would be cool to see both of those teams kind of go against each other. It's going to be a high scoring game. And this is one of those games. I always like to say offense sells tickets, but defense wins games. And both teams have really tried to build up their defense this off season. So it'll be cool to see which team comes out on top with their defense. They both will just be coming off of a bye week, a couple weeks prior to that. So they should be refreshed and ready to go. And it's a Thursday night mm -hmm. game. And I'm really excited to see that. I was also very, um, interested and kind of perplexed that the NFL decided to do a Christmas Day game on a Friday, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be mm -hmm. the Saints and Vikings game. I thought that was yeah. really, really odd. Usually, we yeah. I spend my you know Christmas Day watching basketball um, all day long, and so the only time we ever have an actual game on um, Christmas Day for football is just if it randomly falls on one of the normal mm -hmm. football days. But other than that, we never mm -hmm. see a football game. It's a Friday game. I was very um, confused why we're doing that. I don't like the idea, actually. I want to spend Thanksgiving watching football all day and Christmas watching basketball all day. That's just how I like it. So um, I'm kind of confused about it, but I'm sure it'll be a great game still. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't really like the idea of having that Friday night Christmas game. You're going to have to have a dual screen setup on Christmas Day. So you're going to have your basketball going and your football going at the same time. Uh, it's going to be right. <laughs> difficult to stop managing the holiday on top of it. Uh, quickly, before I get into the next question, Pahokee Sports gave us $4. Always a loyal fan. Thank you so much, Pahokee Sports. So, Jackie, who do you think has the hardest rotation ahead? So I'm going to be completely honest i know i said i was going to watch this three-hour tour uh from the nfl i did not watch one minute of it um and so <laughs> the <did> only I. <laughs> I didn't watch one minute of it i was i it was just I, okay so I see y'all could have thrown that <laughs> i was like damn am i the only one out here that just didn't watch this but <laughs> i looked <laughs> i looked at my saint schedule and um you know, I, I was excited and then bummed at the same time because the first thing I thought was, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to New Orleans to see that opening game in the new stadium, you know, against Brady and company. And then I was like, oh, wah, wah, am I going to be able to go? So to be honest, I haven't even looked through everyone's schedule to see what the matchups would be. Um, I think, you know, the Saints have a pretty typical, you know, matchup as far as who, who we're seeing. It wasn't, I didn't think it was crazy. I know Chris and I probably have to talk about that later. Chris, I'm do you think it was like a crazy schedule? No, the schedule is okay. It's just we yeah, also basic, got right? um we, we also got the Raiders in Vegas too. So I was like, yo, these are games yeah. that I would have been I go making to. my way over to. Yeah. So yeah, so, so frustrating. So that's the only thing. I mean, I, I had some sincere disappointment looking at my schedule because I told you that's the first thing I look at is say, where can I go? And I was like, Oh, I can go, like Chris said, to Vegas, and I definitely wanted to go season opener. And before I went online, I was like, what the hell am I doing? I don't even know. And Britt, you know, brought up a good point before we went on air and said that they're selling games. I just don't want to be the idiot that buys the ticket. Nope. And then they say, hey, we're going to hang on to your money because you can't yeah. come. I just, I'm going to have to wait this one out. <laughs> yeah. They're selling it out, though. It's Same. crazy. 
And I feel the same too, because I could have gone to the season opener for the uh, Dallas Cowboys and the Rams, which is going to be here in LA. And it's the opening of that brand new stadium. And then it's against my team. So that would have been perfect. But uh, I just can't, I can't push the button on buying those tickets right now. But they're selling them. It's a bold move to be buying a ticket right now. There was a funny chat in here that I just wanted to read out that said something like that that schedule or that show is just way too damn long. Give me two paragraphs and like the schedule lineup and that's all I need. <laughs> yeah, and I think we all thought that like, considering none of us watched it. Um, Chris, what was the most surprising thing about the schedule for you? Is there anything in particular that stood out that you were excited about? About the entire uh, like the entire league or just my Saints? Whichever one, your choice, Chris. You you okay, take the obviously. You yeah, because obviously I made the confession. I'm standing with Jackie. I also did not watch the show, unfortunately. I planned on it. It just right. came and gone, and I ended up not seeing it, and that was my, my own fault. But uh, no, for my schedule, I'm not really too concerned about it. The first thing that did stand out, I'm sure, in everyone's mind, they announced it before the, the announcement even yesterday, was that the Saints were playing the Buccaneers that first week. I mean, it leaked. I, I, don't, I should say it was announced. It was leaked that we'd be playing the Buccaneers, and we are. And I'm excited about that. People are saying that, oh, oh Saints, here we go. They're going to be scared. No, we're not scared. I, I'm ready for the NFC South battle. So I'm looking forward to all those games. I feel like those are going to be probably the most fun games or the games that we have against our own division. Um, but we got a bunch of cool uh, games. We, we, the Niners were playing again. Um, like yeah. I just said, I would really was really, really hoping to go to that Vegas game because I was hoping we'd either play at the Lo-Fi Stadium here in L.A. or Vegas so I can make my way over there because we're here in L.A., so the closest trips. But – Mr. Rohn is not letting that happen, but I, I know I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a fun, fun season for the Saints. I think we got a lot of cool rookie matchups, like we talked about yesterday. We're gonna see Tua and Joe play against each other. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to know what you guys think. Games don't start for another uh, four months. Uh, I don't know. I'm bad at math, but they start yeah, in September. September 10th. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, four, so about four or five months. Anyway. Um. What are your predictions for how the season is going to go? Do you guys feel like they could have fans in the stadiums with social distancing rules in place, or do you think it's going to start off as a fanless season? So I I don't know. I will say that, you know, Britt brought up the point about the Christmas game that I was like, what is this about? And it did make me immediately think, okay, are they talking to the NBA? Is the NBA not planning to have games on Christmas? Or what, you know, what is going on with that? And like, you know, we're, we're talking about people that are saying a lot of people, I did a survey on my Instagram that said, Hey, are you going to still wear masks when we get the all clear? And like 60% of the people that responded said yes. So people are still going to have this fear going back out into the public. So I'm like, are these people going to be gung ho about, you know, sitting just elbows length away from people? Is that even going to be allowed from the government standpoint? You know, are, cause right. I've also read an article that said a lot of organizations have already contacted like architects and to try to figure out a way to reduce the seating in their stadium so i don't know how it's going to look but i do know as a fan who loves to go to games like i love talking crap to the person in front or behind me especially if they're a fan of the opposite team you know i love high-fiving you know people that are uh, loving my team (laughs) but it's like yeah. What are we going to do? Are we going to just fist bump? Are we just going to elbow? And if you're far, far away, you have to run over. You have to have, yeah, just point to like, ha ha. <laughs> like, 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 how is this going to look? It's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. Right. Um, I'm going to get into our final need to know news story really quickly. We have two episodes uh, of The Last Dance coming up on Sunday, of course. I know you guys talked about that whole uh, Horace Grant situation on Weekend Zone, which is going to be coming up tomorrow, but basically MJ wouldn't allow him to eat uh, after a bad game. Um, and uh, we also talked about – or there, what we're also going to be seeing in this is the punch with Steve Kerr and MJ – so uh, yeah. I guess my question for you guys really quickly, Chris, I'll start off with you. Do you think that MJ is the meanest basketball player ever? Uh, he had to be or else we wouldn't be talking about him the way we're talking about him. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the territory, I feel like. For sure, for sure. Taking a, a grown man's meal? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I know. I thought the that meanest, was so funny. Though? Maybe the biggest bully. I don't know about the meanest. Definitely a bully. I don't even know about the biggest bully, but he's definitely a bully. But the meanest? You don't think he's the meanest? I don't know. No. I I wanted to ask (laughs) you. 
<laughs> if you think he's what the most savage no, I don't even think he's the most savage. I think he, like, we're talking about guys that literally, they purposely tried to take players out during games, and you're going to be, you're talking about Jordan. No, he may be behind yeah, 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 but that comes... his own team. He's going to be like, oh, no, I'm going to punish That's you. That's not you worse. Do a good job or whatever the case <laughs> is. It's not worse because you're not going after your own teammates. It's not because you're not trying to end somebody's career. Like Michael Jordan never tried to end people's careers by injuring them. To me, that is the worst. I think a dirty player is way worse than saying uh, maybe the guy needs to miss a couple meals. Maybe if p people took some meals away from Charles Barkley, he wouldn't be as big as he is right now. Hey, hey, you know, hey, hey. Man, Charles Barkley just minding his business. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe Kobe should have missed a couple mills too. Maybe Kobe should have took some mills from Shaq. I don't know, but like Michael Jordan, maybe he's just savage Damn, and too. like he's savage in a way that everybody didn't say nothing back to him. If if See, I could literally, this is how I am with men. If I can literally run all over you, yes, I will do that. If you let me do that, I will do that. But if you step up like a man, like which Steve Kerr said he did in that situation after the fact, and then Michael Jordan started respecting him. But Michael Jordan is going to test you. That's it's yeah. as simple as that. The little kid tests their mom to see if they can keep getting cookies out of the cookie jar. If you smack the kid's hand away, he's not going to do it as much anymore. Like <laughs> Michael is the same way. Yeah. Sorry, Horace. You could have had more balls earlier. I think this was proof now, definitely, that Horace was – talking to some reporters and stuff like that, trying to like leak some information because you were hangry. You were mad about it. You were sad that you got, you couldn't eat on the plane with everybody else. So you yeah. got some meals taken from you and you're, you're the snitch. We know, we know it for facts now. I'm just saying. Jackie. I'm giving him a pass if he's a snitch because of that though. Jackie. <laughs> no. Speak up. I speak up in the moment. Don't go behind my back. <laughs> Tell me to my face. <laughs> okay, Jackie, I have one more question for you before we get into our next segment. But um, do you, is there anybody in the league right now who you think is just as savage as MJ was? Oh, I mean, hmm. I'm sure there is, hmm. but I, but hmm. I just, I just don't think, I, I mean, I could definitely see Westbrook, but Westbrook is such a team guy. So I don't see anybody issuing the kind of disrespect that you're going to be taking meals from somebody on the plane. I also don't see this generation of players not getting into a straight up squabble if somebody tries to take food for them. I just don't, I don't even, even if as gentle and timid as, as Steph is, if Clay tried to take some food for him, we would, we would probably hear about a slapping match or something like that. I just don't think it would be, we're not going to hear about a full on fight. It'd be a slapping match. Let's be real. But um, I just don't, I don't see anybody in the league right now allowing the level of disrespect. But again, Jordan was this superstar that the league was pushing to superstar status. So they kind of knew like, hey, we can't say anything because we'll probably get the shorter than that stick. Um, but now nobody cares about the stick. They just ready to go for blows, I think. I, I well, just I don't see really quick. Like, as long as Gilbert Arenas is taking other people's girls, at least MJ wasn't stealing people's girlfriends. Okay, that's all I got to say. <laughs> still, my there were thoughts though. Girlfriend. So I, I thought we gave him a pass for that since they were thoughts. I don't know where we are on this thought conversation. Yeah, Get back to me. <laughs> on the last dance on Sunday, so uh, make sure you tune into that if you want to be in the know when we go live on Monday and talk about it. But for now, Jackie, I'm going to hand it over to you because we have that exciting interview coming up. Yes, we do, you guys. I am super excited about this interview because we have a special guest with us this morning. Oh, Lord Jesus. We have a special guest with us this morning. Um, he's the man who made life much easier, in my opinion, for Cam Newton, and he came out the gate with seven catches for my Saints, and he will now be joining the Bears. So please give me a hand in welcoming Ted Ginn to the show. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How you Is doing? that the quarantine hair? I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's quarantine hair and beard. Where are you quarantining at? I'm in North Carolina right now. Oh, okay. And how's how's the quarantine going? Is is it getting on your nerves? Are you ready to get out? Um, I wouldn't really say it's getting on my nerves. Uh, around this time anyway, you know, like you kinda home with your family and kids and yeah. doing the pick up and drop off from the schools and different things like that. So uh, mm -hmm. it's just a little different that now I became a school teacher. Oh, yeah. You're teaching the kids from home. How's that going? It's tough. I feel like I'm, re <laughs> I'm re 
they feel like I'm redoing the grade with them. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a great deal, you know, uh, being able to put that uh, that time in with your kid and, and mm -hmm. uh, with your kids, because I have twins and a little girl. So, you know, uh, it's just it's just a blessing to give you a new respect for teachers. <laughs> Yeah, it gave me a, a big deal of respect for a teacher because, you know, just the patience that you have when the kid doesn't have it, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's big. You know the answer and you just like, ah, that's what it is. Like, but, uh, you know, it's, it, they should get worth it. It, it, it. It's a good thing they should get their page worth every day for, for being a teacher. Yes, indeed. But congratulations on being signed with the Bears. You're a Midwest guy anyway, so are you excited about, about this move to Chicago? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, being able to come back home, get closer to my family uh, towards the end of my career and just set things up. Uh, Chicago is a great place to, you know, uh, get a lot of things off, just like, you know, MJ and the different things that come from out of there. Uh, you know, we got a good opportunity with the Bears to, to change the culture around there and have fun while we do it. Yeah, and I read that Matt's been calling you every single day. Is that true? Yeah, Nagy had called <laughs> me every day, you know, and um, it, it, it was a great deal, you know. It kind of took it back to the uh, the old school way of recruiting, you know, basically like kind of mm -hmm. what I'm used to, you know. So, um, you know, this year was a little different when it came on a free agency, but uh, with Nagy calling me and tapping in with me on every uh, – Oh, every subject in my life, you know, it was a good deal. And they're not getting annoying yet, all those calls every day? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> now you can't do nothing but call each other, so. Right. <laughs> uh, it's just what it is. You know, I probably have so many Zoom meetings that I ever have in Zoom history on yeah. my account. So, uh, you know, it just, it's just a great deal, man. It's, it's different. I'm glad I'm I'm a part of it, you know, uh, being mm -hmm. 14 years, 35 years old, you know, being able to still go through the transactions and the different phases of this, of this league, uh, it's just a blessing to be here. Yeah, it's definitely a different time now. And you've played with a few different teams. So what are some of the challenges you experience every time you go to a new team? Well, you know, just getting acclimated to the city, uh, mm -hmm. getting acclimated to the team, you know, uh, learning the playbook. But... And all in all, just come as you, you know, and that's one thing that I do. I come in and stay me and don't change up of, of who I am. And that's what makes everybody be able to, you know, be around you because you kind of stick with what the name that they heard or what they see or what they didn't hear. So, you know, uh, just go in and just take care of business like that. Now, your rookie season, you shared that you have a learning disability and that it takes you a little longer than most to learn things, but that didn't stop you from making the honor roll, going to college, and then, of course, making it to the NFL. Who was the coach that really helped you learn while you were in the league at your own pace? Well, you know, uh, I think I, I take that all back to my father, you know, being my mm -hmm. coach and really setting the, the standards and the boundaries on you know, the offense and the defense that we had there really put me in the, the mindset and put me in the stage to be able to go to Ohio State and to the different teams in, in, in the league and uh, kind of put some of the tools that you learned back in the day into that. And that was been my, my tools. It's almost like the stuff that you learn in kindergarten and first grade as far as math don't really change when you doing mm -hmm. anything in life. Like, you know what I'm saying? So if I never learned, was two plus two, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know that as you get older. So I think the little things that I did, you know, under his tutelage made me be able to catch everything as I got older. And time yeah, changed, you know, so he slowed down. Yeah. Is the impact that your dad had while you started, you have a Pop Warner League as well, right? Yes. So I had a Pop Warner League, and that's some of the ways that I could give back to my dad and kind of help him you know, carry on his legacy within something that I want to do instead of having to mm -hmm. go behind something that he has already in place. You know, that's my calling in my book. Like, you get what I'm saying? So I started getting a league, which is a basketball and football program, which we're going to implement track. I have cheerleaders, too. And uh, we only – football been around – I mean, football been around four years. Cheerleader been around two. They're going on three years. Uh 
my basketball team been around. My godson just got a Division One scholarship this year to Detroit. So we started that when he was in the fourth grade. So basketball been around for almost six, seven, almost 10 years now. So um, it's just something that I try to give back to my community, back to my to my kids and just see other kids grow within my community so they can end up like the guys like Marshawn Lattimore or Justin Hardy. And it all start with the community. Right. That's so commendable. Um, on the show last week or week before last, we talked about Jalen Brown and him sharing that a teacher had told him that he was going to end up in prison. You had a teacher tell you that you would end up flipping burgers. Do you remember how that made you feel? And do you ever think about that now? Yeah, I think about it all the time, you know, especially when I go home and see my school is tore down and there's a park now and just, just seeing how the times has changed and how I involved and how the city didn't involve, you know, uh, that's just something that's in my arsenal to help me keep going. I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't do it 14 years is to keep showing the naysayers that I could keep, I can do it, you know, and mm -hmm. just keep being that example for the kids in my neighborhood and in my, in my city and the ones I impact, you know, and I think every kid or every player that's, in my shoes or was in my shoes, you know, had some type of incident like that that really made them be able to trick and say, hey, I'm going to be different than what that dude told me I was going to be. And, you know, now that I can get a hamburger whenever I want to, it's a great yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. Now, you racked up over 1,400 yards and eight touchdowns while you were with my Saints. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, but you had a much better time with, in, with Cam and, and the Panthers. You had over 2,000 receiving yards and 15 touchdowns. What made that system really work for you? I just think it was the brotherhood and, and the karate of the team, the coaching staff. You know, we all knew who we all, all was. We knew what we can all bring to the table and – as far as coaches and players, we put that deal together to make it work and get everything that we can get out of it. And then we went to the top, we just didn't finish it. And I think that was the, the key deal behind it was we was all brothers. We was all brothers. And I mean, like, as far as coaches and players, like, we all depended on each other for what we depended on each other for. And we made it work. Now, at one point, there was talk, I know, that Cam might be going to Chicago. Obviously, that hasn't happened. But what do you think people are missing or maybe even refusing to see when it comes to Cam Newton? Well, you know, I, I get hit with this question a lot just because of our relationship. But, you know, like I say, uh, I really don't know what they're missing. Like, I really don't, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I know that you could sit back and you could say the injuries and different things like that. But every person – in this league had an injury and some of them being career injuries or whatever it may be and they turn around and do great things you know i just think that somebody need to get him in the, in they building figure out who he is personally and, and and unleash that dog that he got inside of him and they're gonna he gonna take him somewhere to a promised land or something are you surprised that he doesn't have a starting job yet yeah yeah for sure i'm i'm, I'm yeah you know it's hard to really go into that type of stuff you know, because I'm not into the the politics of of the right. NFL, but you know, uh, it just it just it, it shows a lot that Cam Newton is not signed with the type of talent that he's in, like what he got, and he don't have any baggage behind him or anything like that bad to where like you just refuse to go get him. So I really don't understand what it is, but I keep God, I keep praying for my brother, and he'd be all right. Now, when you were younger, I know you were probably dreaming of the NFL. Did you dream of a specific team you wanted to play for or just being in the NFL in general? Well, you know, just being in the NFL in general, you know, was the goal. Once, you know, I start going towards this this journey, you kind of figure out that you can land anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to always be a Cleveland Browns fan. I'm always going to be a Cavaliers fan, an Indians fan. That's just where I'm from. So you can never take that away from me. But, you know, as far as my job, you know, I had to go wherever they let, wherever I landed, and that was something that was taught to me as I was coming out. Don't get yourself, like, get your sights caught on just one spot. Like, you could be anywhere, and over these fourteen years, you could see that you could be in one city next year, one one year, and another city next year, and back to that city the next year. So you just never know how this thing gonna gonna plan out. 
Just got to prepare, be prepared and help that your family and your support system is behind you. Yep. Now, the Bears added uh, Mooney, the rookie from Tulane, um, Trevor Davis, who is entering his fourth year, and also you. Can you explain to me how you somehow have the fastest time after going into your 14th year in the in the league? What is your secret? I think it's the, the like, like I always go back to how you train coming out. My father put this mm -hmm. machine together a long time ago. And I found the different pieces and the different people to help keep it oiled up and keep that machine running. And I just stick with them. I've been with my same trainer or I've been with a different trainer that knows me, but I'm constantly winning for like the last two, three years. Like, you know, I just try to stick with guys that really help me be able to keep my, my body going the way that it goes. And a lot of it just come back from just mental preparation that I did as a kid that I know now that helps me out. Who do you think is the fastest receiver in the league? Me. I knew it. <laughs> and who's your favorite? My favorite? I love Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like him. I All watch right. him a lot on film, you know. I get a lot of, I get a lot of his routes. So a lot of people, you know, see how he did it, let's try to do it like him. And I, I watched mm -hmm. Tyreek. Uh Deshaun Jackson was was one of my favorites. You know, um, that's really it till you start going to the old school guys that's, yeah. you know, retired and, and done. But, like, guys that's still in this game that I really look at, Deshaun Jackson. I like that guy out of uh, Tampa Bay, the young guy. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot his name. I love him. You know, like people that's around around my my type of ability, I try to, I try to watch and keep out yeah. for him, you know, so. All right, so before we go, let's play a quick game, if you don't mind. I'm going to say a word or a phrase, and then you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Sound good? Yes. Okay, all right. Let's start with uh, Tony Sperano. Rest in peace. Okay. Super Bowl 50. Should have won. <laughs> right. Troy Smith. My brother. Okay. Ted Ginn Sr. My idol. Nice. All right. Cam Newton. Hope we get a job. And 2020. Go back. Skip with the 2021. <laughs> right. It's a hot mess here, right? It's too much. Yeah. Rest in peace, Kobe. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You wanted to everyone in the chat, by the way, we have a live chat going on. They just want me to tell you that you are a beast. They love you. You have a lot of fans out there. Anything you want to say before you go? Thank you. Thanks for all the support. I'll keep up the good work. Yes, we are excited to see you. We will be following you for sure. And be safe and feel free to come back to the fumble anytime you want. Call me anytime. All right. Be safe. All right, once again, everybody, that was Ted Ginn Jr. I feel so excited that he joined us here on The Fumble. We are so honored and privileged that he did that. So, Devin, let's get back into this rundown. And But thanks again to Ted and all of his um, people for making this happen with us. Jackie, you crushed that interview. Thank you so much for doing that. You asked all the questions that the people in the chat wanted you to ask. Really, really yay. awesome. Uh, That's good because I couldn't see the chat, so yay. <laughs> yeah, well, if you were reading the chat, you killed it. So thank you so much yay. to Ted for being here. And now, Chris, it's time to get into social. We already talked about one weird thing that happened on social media with Giannis, but I know you have a lot more coming up for us, so can you take us into the post up? Oh, of course. Of course, we got plenty of weird things to happen in social media here on Post Up with your boy, Chris, Quarantine Edition. That's right. We are going into the craziness that is social media in sports. And before I jump in, I got to say, Teddy, because I can't say it next season because you will bear now. But that was a dope interview. Good job, Jackie. Um, yeah, man. Oh, God. Teddy used to have the best routes and Drew Brees. Always anyways, anyways, it's not about that. It's about what we got here for Post Up. Now, first off, 
<laughs> this is a, a kid that gets beat up all the time by social media, and this is no different. Um, I do believe he kind of did this one to himself a little bit. Um, we know Lonzo has been posting all of his workouts and all the crazy shenanigans that he's been doing in their crazy mansion, the ball estate, if you will, over in Chino Hills, California. And yesterday was no different because he posted a video on his um, story of him working out and people found everything wrong with this workout from the form all the way to his in the words of the tweets i read his mm -mm. fisher price workout set fisher so price. <laughs> <laughs> there it is that one for devin devin <laughs> wanted to <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That was for you, Devin. Uh, yeah, though his form isn't great, um, we've seen uh, there was a lot of pro uh, hoopers, pro, pro football players that were commenting on uh, the tw uh, the tweet that was shared by, um, I think it was uh, Ball is Life that uh, put, put this up, and Overtime, excuse me, put it up, and people were saying, like, you know, his form is bad it's because he got too much weight, he got a small frame, this, that, and the third. But can Lonzo just get – a little bit. Can you just can you breathe? It's a quarantine, all right? He's trying to work out. He's trying to get himself in shape, but my man is getting killed with every little thing he does. And, you know, he's feeling like he's hyped up. He's, you know, there's a Brits boy right there, the guy that can't dance, and he was in his um, TikToks <laughs> or his Instagram videos. <laughs> but, guys, I just want to say, Jack, you oh, Devin, actually, I want, I'm curious. I want to hear from you, Devin. Um, <laughs> okay, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt there, but... <laughs> please, <laughs> please, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Please, please, please. Let us know what you're feeling. I actually have a question for everybody. Wasn't Lazar yes. a personal trainer? So I am not a weightlifting expert. I'll admit that I can <laughs> barely squat 50 pounds and I can't lift that over my head. I have to use one of the, the racks because it's too heavy for me. So I'm not an expert, but even really? I could tell that his form was off. So why isn't Lavar in there correcting his form? I'm just, and it just makes me wonder, is this why he's had so many injuries? Is it because of the poor form weightlifting that could be it because a lot of people think that he's has it's been on his legs a lot of his injuries on the leg but it could be that people think that the kind of workouts that lavar was putting them through all the way through high school middle school whatever were bad for their body and they weren't being worked out the right way and he's been working out like you said with his dad his entire career and if that's the case it looks like his uh workout form is just as bad as his jump shot was in his first two years of his, of his career i said first two years because it's better now lonzo i see you i ain't gonna completely flame on you like <laughs> Like that but uh yeah lonzo get it together man before you putting out these and you acting all confident yelling screaming no, stop we got to get the form together but the fisher price workout set like come on now i have to admit though he do got too much money to have a workout like like a you know like you know those apartment complexes and they got the little added gym that are like downstairs <laughs> in the basement that's what his gym looked like and he ball of state uh -uh. come Our on gym looks come on than that. don't do us like that do not do us like yeah. that. Our apartment gym looks better than that don't do that <laughs> oh my god so can't catch a break but you know who can't catch a break is a player that i'm very excited about i've watched this kid well because he was around the same circuit as my little brother so um he put me on him his name is josh christopher a lot of you guys probably know who he is but he just recently decided to go to arizona state which is a school that a certain nba all-star went to um in his time in college and the thing is they both wear the same number well josh christopher hit up this said player the player in is James Harden, number 13, the number 13 of Arizona State. He put up some great numbers over there. James Harden actually played down the street at Artesia High School, right down the street from where I live right now. Um, wore number 13 there, too. And Josh Christopher hit up uh, uh, James Harden, asked if he could wear the number, and James Harden said, by all means, young blood. And now he will be wearing 13 at Arizona State in his time there, whether it be one year, two year, whatever, however long he stays there. But I think this is a dope um gesture from james i do believe that he did uh give it to the right one josh christopher is nice he's um anticipated to be a lottery pick um in the 21 draft so shout out to james harden love that gesture josh christopher now you better not let him down by wearing number 13 okay <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the next one um <laughs> okay ai okay so <laughs> we all know about the famous practice we talk about practice well ai thought that he would remix that tweet so it fit 
<laughs> the times that we're going through right now. He posted this on Twitter. It was pretty clever. Uh, it's a picture of him in that interview. <laughs> and he tweeted, we talk about practicing social distancing. Hashtag stay home. Hashtag stay safe. I just want to know why he's so late with this tweet. Like, he should have oh, put this no. up when the whole... No, 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 no. Yesterday was the 18th anniversary of that moment. So it was 18 oh, years. Oh, so he was putting it. Got day. it. Got yeah. it. Got yeah. it. That says, I still would prefer. Okay, that okay, that saves a little bit. I still would Wait, like to move a little bit sooner. Yes, relevant. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I still quote it. I take back my. I must say, people still quote the practice. Yeah, so do I. Everyone yeah. practices. Uh, uh, practices the practice quote. Everyone still quotes the practice <laughs> quote. <laughs> it was that in the whole practice. And, but yeah, shout out to Aaron. Now knowing that that makes it even better, I love that. Um, look at AI getting a part of the meme culture. I love it. Uh, moving on to the next one. This one is crazy, yo. This, but this, we thought this story was crazy enough as it is. It gets even crazier. Now we talked yesterday oh, about man. Earl and Nina Thomas, and you know the whole Nina pulled him at gunpoint and wrestling uh earl butt naked wrestling the gun away from her even though there was there was some bullets in the chamber even though she thought there wasn't and that whole debacle and whatnot and then earl thomas drops the video saying that they're working on things and after this new video that dropped they really must be working on things because according to this video that he put up he added uh nina thomas and apparently she got him this ice that's on his neck. So I, this saga makes no sense to me. I'm just glad everybody is all right. I just feel like th with situations like this, this is just brewing for something else to happen in a future date. But this is none of my business. Um, as long as everybody's cordial I'm now. I still don't. He bought that before the fight. And he's flossing it now to make and it he's look out like, here trying oh, to make it seem. I, I'm gonna say she got that before the fight, cause ain't no way in hell I'm gonna buy something that expensive. No and, way. And she, ain't she in no jail way. right now, or did he bail her out? Like, where is she at right now? <laughs> what jeweler <laughs> is open right now that she could actually You're get right. that for him? No, this she hasn't got that before. It's real good. Can we all this recognize a moment really quick? What happened? Can we all recognize a moment really quick? Um, can we just acknowledge the fact that she probably bought this for him with his own money, though? Can I just, oh, can we just say that? that yes, she yes. picked 100%. it up. She paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> she picked it. He paid. Mm -hmm. And then he's still thanking her for it. That's right. So, I mean, he was still winning the situation. I don't know. Yeah. This whole thing is just so Maybe the award he delivered it. I think <laughs> <laughs> could have ordered this online because they're still doing online orders so she custom ordered right. it and then this is her way of saying i'm sorry i held a gun within a foot of your face so this maybe is her way the consolation prize for nearly uh shooting him in the head killing but him but at the end of the day card information. Isn't, isn't she still in jail but it's his, it? like it's his credit card so, uh, information she just has to say a word to somebody on outside uh, yeah 100 percent. no no 100 percent. whether it's a sorry whether it's a gift doesn't matter Got we it. know he used his money like that's regardless but yo i look i, I don't want to pry but i don't know what's going on that's y'all business hope y'all getting it figured out and we're gonna move on to this next <laughs> and i love this one okay we talk about gymnastics you guys have found out that i am secretly a gymnastic scout and arnold schwarzenegger cut make made the cut for me okay check out this video of arnie out here making some crazy flexible stretches and this is a hundred percent real here's the video <laughs> that can't be yes it is a hundred percent real i think it is not a hundred percent real that is cute. Yo, I love that so much. And he looked at the cigar like, yeah, good job well done here today. Shout out to Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. This dude is the best. Every time he puts up a video, it's always funnier than the last. And this one, <laughs> impressive. Also, shout out to the Adidas superstars on the fake feet. I see you over there. Okay, repping. I see you. I see you. And last but not least, um, we got to have the GOAT conversation one more time because Shaq has chimed in and... I don't know. I, I don't. I wasn't surprised hearing his opinion because Shaq is probably one of the few players that was able to play with or against all three players that are considered goats in the minds of the masses. He's played against Michael Jordan um, when he came into the league, played with and against Kobe Bryant, also played with, even though he wasn't at his best, he played with LeBron James and played against LeBron James in a few years of his career too before he um, retired. 
So um, he went on Get Up and he talked about who he thinks is the all time GOAT. Uh, all time GOAT. That makes no sense. He th- Who he thinks is the GOAT, and here's what he had to say about who his choice was the GOAT for Michael, the GOAT. Michael paved the way for all the great guys we have now. And 6 0 in the finals uh, without a legitimate big man. Uh, went through a lot. Took a year off. Came back and won three more in a row. He's definitely the greatest player. And I think if you ask, you know, the other guys that are brought up, I'm sure that they will say it too. Scotty Pippen made a great point. You can't say I'm the greatest player. You have to let your peers and everyone else say who the greatest player is. <sighs> Again, you know where I stand in the conversation. And uh, who's that clapping? Yeah, I wanted to see what was clapping. You know, and you the know, thing you is, know it's me. yeah, I, I did, I did. <laughs> uh, look, and you know what? He makes the great points. He said all the I I don't disagree with the statements that are being made there. But are we? Shaq said it. Like I said, Shaq been through every single player, every single primes, all the primes what, and what whatnot of each of these players. Debate Shaq. over. That's what it says. I didn't the write debate. that either. So, and I could say I didn't write it either. But for now, the debate is over. And even <laughs> though you know the debate is not over, because it will definitely come back up, and we'll save that for another time. But until then, we are done with post up. <laughs> well, if you guys agree with Shaq, uh, go ahead and put a goat emoji in the chat. Let's see how many of you are with Shaq on this one. You all know where Jackie and I stand. But now, speaking of Jackie, let's get into <laughs> WTF. Tell us what the weirdest things happening in the world are, Jackie. Okay, guys. Well, one of the weirdest things in WTF world, of course, is the coronavirus. Um, Like I said earlier, we kind of get to go out a little bit here in California. Not a lot, just a little bit. But um, I will say this. The NBA is more concerned about going back to business than they are the lockdown. According to a report from Baxter Holmes of ESPN, several NBA team officials are more concerned about people who might be quote, germaphobes. The report says general managers, athletic trainers, all pointed to a number of players, though they say it's not a large percentage, that they describe as germaphobes, and they think that they are going to be really concerned. And then Woj posted this tweet that says, without widespread coronavirus testing available to the country, the NBA remains sensitive on using tests with players showing no symptoms entering facilities to start workouts. If and when NBA opens camps for a formal return to play, there's an understanding testing protocols would change. So I I get the hesitation, but you guys know I've been saying from day one, we cannot live like this forever. We do have to get back to a sense of normalcy for our own mental health and for the economy. At some point, we got to get back to making some money. Um, so I, I don't know. I get it. But germaphobes are always going to be germaphobes. I know a few germaphobes. They were like this before <laughs> the coronavirus. They're going to be like that after. I don't know if that's something we should consider. So Chris, is the NBA going to be able to please everyone in this situation? Or how much emphasis do you think we should put on someone being a real germaphobe when we're talking about getting back to work? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, they're, they're um, it, you know there's no hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know hey, that Brent. there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> no, you Not know, you, <laughs> but you're right. Take it, take it away. No, I was just gonna say no. I, I simply answer no. I, and and this is with any situation in the NBA, something like this. Obviously, it's so brand new. They don't know how to go about and like you said, get into a form of normalcy and. I just feel like there's going to be a lot more people that are going to be okay with moving forward with, with the little information they got while making those steps into bringing the league back. Then there will be the, those germaphobes that are in the league and we'll, we'll just be seeing a lot of DNPs because these guys might not be ready, right. but I feel like they're going to end up moving forward without them. And that might have to be the case, at least in the beginning. Yeah. Can like I, just I said, them- I'm, I'm yeah, of course. Well, you guys know that I feel like I'm the resident germaphobe of the fumble panel. Yeah. And even I don't think that they <laughs> on pause. They can't pr- uh, prolong this hiatus just to make sure that these people who are nervous about germs feel okay. I think that they just need to implement better sanitation, sanitation measures and then keep things going. We need basketball back. Yes, we do. Listen to Devin. She's the germaphobe. She has spoken. (laughs) All right, kids, let's grab your phones and get ready to do a Google search because I'm going to say a name that you probably don't hear every day. Oh, my. Mike Mike Glennon. All right, go ahead. Take a second. Look it up because if you have no idea who he is, do not feel bad because he's what I call the, the journeyman quarterback of the league. He started in 2013, and from then until now, he has paid a total of 22 games. 
Nonetheless, let's take a look at this tweet that has me dying. He says, the Jags have added a veteran QB agreeing to, agreeing to terms with Mike Glennon. League sources say he has come in behind Garner Minshew, another person that, anyway, um, to add some experience to the team uh, <laughs> quarterback room. How, I, how is a person who's only played 22 games since 2013 adding veteran experience that he's just a journeyman. He's not a, he's a journeyman. This is so disrespectful considering Cam does not still have a job. I don't even know what to make of this. Um, so that's all I got to say about that. Since we're running low on time, I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit on the weekend zone, but right now it's time for Chris. I don't hear you warming up your vocals, Chris. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are ready. You ready? Yep. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It's time for Brit's takes. B -b Brit's takes. <laughs> love it thank you all right guys um i would like okay we're gonna get me on camera for brit's takes love this it okay <laughs> so we have we have all been raving over mj's 10 docuseries the last dance which um is currently the number one rated docuseries in the whole entire world it passed up tiger kings thank you goodness because it should um but uh yeah. this has a lot of fans asking like what's the next one we're all fiending for more now we want more docuseries like this um obviously people um it was announced recently that kobe bryant actually filmed a lot of his last season and stuff as well so Obviously, that's something people are looking forward to. And then the Warriors came out and said that they did not film when they had their 73 win season, even though they had been asked about it. Um, so obviously, people were upset that we will never get to see that in the future. Um, but can I tell you guys something? Michael Jordan's people that are a Michael Jordan status, that comes around once in a lifetime. And y'all need to chill with requesting to get docu-series about any and everybody because we don't need that. We shouldn't have that. That is like overkill. This is why we have 30 for 30 and why we have a football life. You do one episode on something and then you move on. Like obviously Kobe just passed away this past year or this year and, um, Yes, yeah, so it's, it's great that we heard that a lot of his last season was filmed. And obviously, that's something that is time sensitive. We would want to see that pretty soon. But everybody else, I mean, even Michael Jordan's, we waited 20 years to see this. Like, this was filmed a long time ago, and we're seeing it now. I, okay, I'm going to agree with LeVar Ball here because um, LeVar Ball actually has talked about he's not watching The Last Dance because he remembers everything that happened in that situation because um, he lived it. He was there during that time. He remembers all the news articles and stuff like that. And I actually feel the same way about the Aaron Hernandez one, and I spoke very mm. vocally about it. Um, I thought that was a crappy docuseries because, number one, we already had a documentary about it prior to that moment, and two, that was brand new information. Like, the whole thing just happened a couple years before. So everybody that is of age now was there in the moments when it happened. We all, if you knew anything about football or you watched football and stuff, which most of us did, we all know who Aaron Hernandez was. We all remember when he got arrested. We all remember the trial. Everything happened. So to show somebody, all of us, that several years later is pointless. This is something maybe in 20 years you do a documentary on and give all the, this information because the next generation isn't going to be as known about the situation as we are just like now we're just now getting charles manson stuff we didn't need charles manson stuff back in the 70s right. when everything happened because everybody remembered when it happened so the aaron hernandez thing i was a big person saying like why are we watching this right now it's silly to watch right now because we all saw it happen a couple years ago and they had already did the documentary releasing that he was um gay or whatever we already knew that so this new docuseries that they did it was pointless to do because we already knew all that information. So um, besides the part of it, the relevance of time on it, I think obviously the most important part of it is the compelling story. Yes, there are a lot of great athletes in the world, but do we need a docu-series about all of them? Absolutely not. I don't want to see anything about a great athlete who had just like this honky-dory perfect career. You want to see stuff about Michael Jordan because it's scandalous it's salacious it's crazy he's punching people he's not feeding people he's doing all this stuff he has a gambling problem whatever the case is and it's michael jordan you want to see stuff maybe i would say a docuseries on 
Mike Tyson. I would love to see a docuseries on Floyd Mayweather. I would love to see one on Tiger Woods. I would love to see one on the Dallas Cowboys in the early 90s with Michael Irvin and his cocaine addictions and, you know, prime time on the team and Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson and their relationship with each other. Even O.J. Simpson, the reason why O.J. Made in America is so good is because the actual thing happened in the early 90s, and then we get to look back on it now, and this whole generation that didn't get to live it gets to see it. So I think you need controversy. I'm sick of everybody asking for a docu-series about every single person. We don't need it. I don't want to see it. Stop doing them. Like, we're in this era of, like, doing overdoing docu-series and I'm tired of it. I don't want to see anything unless it's a super crazy, compelling story and it happened a long time ago. The only spot to that where I'm going to differ is the Kobe Bryant thing and that's just because of his passing. Anybody else, give me 20 years before you give me a docu-series about him. I don't give a shit. Um, my question is to you, Chris. It's a two-part question here. First part of that question is, do you agree with my thoughts on not every, just because you're a great player and a great athlete, you are deserving of a docu-series that has multiple episodes. I'm not talking about a 30 for 30 or a football life or whatever. I'm talking about a docu-series where it's at least five to 10 episodes. Do you think just because you're a great athlete that you should get one of those? I think you are insane because I want a 10 part Lynn Sanity docuseries. No, I'm playing. No, I completely agree. I feel like that's, that's so what. No, but, <laughs> right. No, F the great athlete. Just put up. No, I'm saying. No, but no, seriously. I, I feel like you made the same point that I was making the other day in a separate stream where th these things, the, what makes these documentaries that are actually good so good is the time in between and the, you know, the stories and stuff that you think you already have figured out but then you're learning more information in between and like you said there's a lot of there's unfortunately there's like scandal and all kinds of other little things that are in between a lot of these stories michael jordan even though he's the goat he has the in between as we saw last weekend you know oj simpson that speaks for itself you know what i'm saying so i do believe that these docuseries like for these for them to uh be as great as this michael jordan was that there has to be that 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 piece in between that space in between where we can learn everything and then still be surprised 20 15 years later and i think that's what makes um the series so great but we know also too in today's day and age everybody when you see one thing great you want to see another thing great best example is the nfl had a great draft that was brand new said let's do a whole three hour <laughs> schedule reveal that's just how where we are right now in the world mm -hmm. yeah so um and I, I want to add on to that, too, just like a little bit. The athlete, if they are still alive at the time of the docuseries, has to be willing to talk about the scandalous stuff. So with that, I'm going to ask you the second part to my question. I'm definitely not asking Jackie this because I already know. Does <laughs> LeBron James get a docuseries or is he more of a guy that would just get a 30 for 30? Like, does LeBron James have enough conflict during his career and enough stuff where he would be willing to talk about scandalous stuff that he – and in 20 years, I'm talking about 20 years, deserves a docuseries. Answer well, I might not Chris, go. Gotta come I won't go. At some point. Right, right, right. I won't go full <laughs> Jackie, but I will go semi Jackie. 100 percent he does because he did have scandal. LeBron did have a lot of scandal, especially before he even came in the league. There was a lot of stuff in high school that he had to go through from money and picking up money. For, so I feel like there's a lot of things, but I still agree with the first point you made. I don't want it as soon as LeBron retires. I don't want it right away. I want us to marinate in him, you know, being out yeah. of the league. Yes, exactly. That that's my thing. But I do believe he deserves well more than maybe not 10 part series i'm sure that's where we'll disagree jackie well, but he definitely deserves a docuseries <laughs> where you can break down because there, there was a lot we gotta i want the behind the scenes of the decision you know what i'm saying i want all those kind of mm -hmm. stuff there's a lot of things that i do want to learn about with, with lebron james so i do believe he deserves a docuseries awesome well that's it for brit's takes thanks guys i want to add one thing to that there's a big difference between you know a documentary about 90s basketball and a documentary about an athlete or a team now because now we have social media we're seeing everything right. basically as it's happening and i think right. um, to your point it takes away from the novelty and excitement of it because we already know so i do agree yep. that there does be this this uh space in between a documentary about an athlete or a team uh, and that's why this uh michael jordan one is so exciting but you guys, uh, that wraps up our show for today. If you would like to see a LeBron documentary, just because I want to get it in there, put some purple and yellow. <laughs>
<laughs> just do it, you know, and I even if you do don't, it. too bad. It's coming. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you subscribe to our channel you guys give this video a thumbs up tap the bell for notifications wash your hands wear a white shirt walk jog or run 2.23 yes. miles in honor of yeah. ahmed and uh that's all we've got for you happy so we'll see you him. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to him man. and we'll see you guys for weekend zone tomorrow uh the last dance uh post show shows <laughs> on Sunday night and then live Monday 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So bye you guys. Bye.